Tom Hauser here with another midweek blessing. Hey, if you're like me, you probably consider yourself a pretty average person, uh, a person of average abilities, average intellects, intellect. And uh, I think that's probably true. I think most humans are not superhuman. We can't run a faster mile than anyone else or jump higher. Or our intellect isn't all that superior to anyone else's. And uh, while that's true, I think it's also true, as I read through Ephesians for the fourth time this last week, that Paul uses some big words when he talks about who we are as a result of following Christ. So I just want to read this list to you. It's a pretty dramatic list that you'll find in the first three chapters of Ephesians. This is what Paul says about you. If you're a follower of Jesus, this is what he says about you. Let's just take a listen. He says that you are holy, that you are without fault, that you have been adopted, that you are free, that you're forgiven, that you're an heir, that you're God's possession, that you've been purchased, that you are hopeful, holy, powerful, alive, saved, raised, seated with Christ. He says you are an example, that you are God's masterpiece, that you are near God, that you are at peace with God, that you are a citizen and fellow family member, that you are part of his house and part of his holy temple. These are big words that are used to describe everyday average saints like you and I, people who call themselves followers of Jesus. This is what the scriptures say that we are. That doesn't mean that we are awesome at everything. It doesn't mean that we're better than the next person. It simply means by definition, because we're a follower of Jesus, these things are true of us. Now, as I read through that list, for me, the word that stood out was free. Because I'm a follower of Jesus, I'm free. And it occurred to me, free from what, or free to do what? And so I did a quick little Bible search. And let me tell you just a few things that the New Testament says about you and I uh, with regard to being free. Listen to this list. It says we are free from the power of sin. We are free from the requirements of the law. We are free from slavery to sin. We are free from blame free from the spiritual powers of this world, free from the fear of dying, free from the penalty of sins, and free to be God's slave. Friends, you and I, again, if we, are, if we count ourselves as followers of Christ, we are free, uh, free from so many things and freed to do and be so many things. So my encouragement to you this week is to not to dwell on what you're not not to dwell on the fact that as a human being you are probably average at most everything but instead to dwell on the fact that as a follower of Jesus you are this long list of things holy blameless powerful alive raised you're an heir you're a masterpiece that in the eyes of God you are remarkable the rest of Ephesians the last half of Ephesians invites us to live a life that's that reflects that it reflects these truths about us. And so I want to encourage us to do that this week. Uh, Paul writes to, 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 to work hard at living a kind of life that reflects these truths about us. So let's try to do that this week. Let's, let's soak in uh, who God says we are and, and let's walk that out day by day, learning how to live more and more in light of who we are and whose we are. Anyway, until next time, peace, friends.